agreed to end their strikes. I'm so relieved that QP accepted our offer, that they showed the same willingness to compromise. Because today, kids are back in class, exactly where they belong. I want to say a special thank you to QP Canada, Unifor, and our private sector union partners who helped get us back to the table. And we intend to keep our end of the bargain. On Monday, we'll be introducing legislation to repeal Bill 28 in its entirety. With the cooperation of the opposition, we expect to get it passed quickly. Now, both sides need to bring the same spirit of cooperation to negotiations. I've heard QP say we need to invest more in lower income workers. I couldn't agree more. So today, we're back at the table. And while I can't get into details, we're back at the table with an improved offer, particularly for the lower income workers. Just as we're listening to QP, we also need QP to listen to us. As Premier, I always need to consider the bigger picture. I always need to consider how decisions impact the entire province. Our agreement with QP, it will have massive impacts on broader public service salaries, especially as we continue negotiating with teachers. These impacts, they could cost tens of billions of dollars. That's money we need for schools, healthcare, transit, and infrastructure. It's money we need for vital services that every hardworking people of this province rely on. That's why it's so important that QP understands where we're coming from. We want a deal that's fair for students, fair for parents, fair for taxpayers, and fair for workers, particularly lower income workers. We know we can get there. We know we will get there. Thank you, and God bless the people of Ontario. Now I'd be happy to take questions. We're going to take questions from the floor, one question and one follow-up. Hi, Premier. Hi. Uh, 24 hours ago, you were talking about the offer that you'd already made to QP being really generous, you know, historic um, wage increase over, over the last 10 years. What's different now, uh, 24 hours later, that you're willing to, to move and improve upon what you've, in your words, improve on what you've offered? You know, it comes down to the art of negotiations on both sides. We have to sit down there, uh, give a little on both sides uh, for the betterment of, of the students, of the parents, and, and the uh, low-income workers. And, you know, that's the way negotiations go sometimes. Not everyone's going to agree, but hopefully we can come uh, together and have a, a good compromise that respects uh, all parties at hand. Are you willing to move on the higher paid category? Are you sticking to? I know we, you were asked yesterday about people earning less than forty-three thousand. Is that just where the improvement is? Well, I, I, I'm sorry, I can't talk about the details uh, where we're at, but I, I'd love to send it over to Minister Lecce. And I, I just got to tell you, folks, about Minister Lecce. He works around the clock. Uh, many conversations between him and I. I think the other one went till quarter to one in the morning over the weekend. Uh, he's done a, a stellar job. I'm proud to say he's the Minister of Education, and I told him through these tough times, uh, you know, keep your head up high, and he has. Uh, he's a brilliant minister, and uh, Minister Lecce has a, a bright future. I'll pass it over, Minister. Yeah, thank you. I think the what we're trying to do today is demonstrate to the people of Ontario that we are listening to parents by ensuring their kids are in school. That is the bottom line. And the Premier set out a priority in the summer. Normal, stable, enjoyable schools. Disruptions causes great deal of impacts on a million parents, on two million kids. And we know these kids need to be in school. And so we were coming to the table today with the spirit of getting a deal, a voluntary agreement, a deal we always wanted to achieve on a voluntary basis that protects the in-person learning experience, uh, but also, as the Premier noted, increases those wages to the lowest paid workers within our schools. You know, not those at the higher end making north of 100,000, like for example, with those on the, the teacher side, but we're talking about the lowest paid. We have always believed we need to give them more. We started with that premise, and we'll continue to make that case at the negotiating table. And I just hope we can both come to the table with a commitment 
to keep the kids in school uh, so that we could all live with this deal and ultimately parents could have some stability in their lives. Thank you. Good morning, Premier Liam Casey with Good morning. Union Press. Um, with unions like Levino coming out against Bill 28, uh, does that irreparably damage the worker-friendly relationship your government has been uh, working hard for? Not, not at all. I have an incredible relationship with Joe Mancinelli, uh, the whole Leuna team. Uh, there's going to be things that we may disagree on. Like I said yesterday, you know, we'll, we'll agree on, I think I said 95, we'll probably agree on 98% of, of the items that we put forward. They've been a great partner on uh, with the trades and, and, and trade centers that we can start training. They're going to be a great partner in, in building 1.5 million homes over the next 10 years. And uh, we appreciate the relationship. I, I talk to Joe frequently, and uh, we have a good understanding where we both stand. And I appreciate his support. I appreciate all the private sector's uh, support. And as I said earlier on, I want to give a shout out to uh, QP Canada and uh, Unifor that uh, are very pragmatic. Uh, they understand the situation we're in. They understand their, their, uh, where QP uh, local is uh, going as well. So. You know, folks, I, I just, I'm, I don't want to fight. I just want the kids in school. Um, that, that's what I want to do. You know, I'm, I'm past the stage of, of fighting, and, and it's not worth it. People don't want it. Parents don't want it. Students don't want it for sure. And I'll tell you, the other people that were affected were the employers. When, when you have a million kids, uh, you know, staying at home, and they don't want it. I, I talked to a grandfather. And I think I said that yesterday. And he said, Doug, I love my grandchildren, but I just had four of them dumped off at, at my home. <laughs> I'm babysitting all day, so uh, do whatever you can. So I just want to thank everyone. Let's, let's work together and move forward. That's, that's all I'm asking. Thanks, Premier. So you, you said you don't want to fight. You're past fighting. Last week, it seemed like you're ready for a big fight. You brought the sledgehammer with the notwithstanding clause. What, hap what happened over the weekend to do, the, oh. to do a 180? You know, I... I wouldn't say. I, I never wanted to fight from the beginning, but when QP got up and walked away from the table, what else do I have, right? I, I want them to stay at the table. Let's negotiate. Uh, I don't care if we negotiate all day, all night. Um, we'll, we'll do it. I, I don't think it's really changed at all. And uh, I wouldn't call it a sledgehammer. I call it a tool, similar to they have a tool. And their big sledgehammer is going on strike. So that's, that's even more dangerous than any, any tool I ever have. Uh, Premier Rob Ferguson from the Toronto Star. Hi, Rob. Uh, good morning. Um, good morning. Just wondering, uh, we understand that there was a higher offer presented to QP uh, maybe last weekend that, yeah. that they didn't accept. So is this new improved offer you spoke of uh, a few minutes ago, is it in the same ballpark? Is that that same number? Yeah, Rob, I, I really wish I could, I could tell you, uh, you know, mediator would have my neck if I did. I, I just can't. Uh, but we did offer a higher amount. I thought we had a deal. I was convinced we had a deal. And all of a sudden, they came back to my office and said, there's, there's no deal. I was, I was floored. But uh, anyways, we'll go back to the table. We're going to give it everything we can. And uh, hopefully, we're going to get a deal, keep the kids in class. Um, do you think you can get a deal before the uh, legislation is repealed? I'm just wondering, because uh, we all kind of assumed yesterday that the house might be recalled today so yeah. we're wondering why it hasn't been why it's waiting till monday uh is the union good with that and do you yeah. think you can get a deal yeah well I'm, I'm keeping my word we're repealing it on on monday i know all all three four parties are out there taking care of their constituents and we've all agreed um to, to come back on monday let's get it done i'm sure the opposition will pass it right away as we will and let's continue negotiating. There's nothing more. I'd love, love to see uh, negotiation finish uh, by the end of the week. Is it likely? I, I can't answer that right now. I really can't. Hey, Premier. Uh, Aiden Hi. Schmendy with Queen's Park Briefing. Hi. Um, I like the tie, by the way. Oh, um, thank you. I'm going to tell you a story about that tie at the end. <laughs> it's an interesting story. Um, have you ruled out using uh, back-to-work legislation for uh, all labor disputes for the rest of your time in office, kind of considering how this has gone? Well, like I've said before, I, I, I don't like using Section 33. Believe me, I don't. I, I just, you know, that's the only tool we, we had at the end of the day. Uh, but I want to look forward. I want to have some good negotiations, especially for the lower-income workers. That, that's my key, the lower-income workers. As the minister mentioned, 
you know, uh, there's other workers that are making 100,000 plus benefits, plus pension, plus 131 sick days and everything else. Um, but I want to take care of the, the lower income workers, which I always believe right from day one since I've been elected. And we've, we've shown that no matter if we're increasing uh, minimum wage or, or giving them the rates that they, they need. So that's what we're going to focus on, the lower income workers. Um, and the vote on Bill 28 on Thursday, a rather historic vote using the notwithstanding clause overriding a charter right. I'm wondering if you can explain why you weren't in the chamber to vote on that legislation uh, for third reading. I was probably out running around. I can't remember the exact timing, but uh, we have a good team that represents uh, our party. We have a phenomenal minister, phenomenal cabinet, a great caucus, and uh, sometimes the premier of the day, be it me or someone else, they're, they're running around. But I, I can assure you, folks, uh, I don't leave my office till midnight every single night, not Queens Park, but even my Etobicoke one. I'm on the phone all night uh, returning calls. And you have two choices uh, if you're elected official. You either live in the bubble down at Queens Park and listen to staff and listen to other politicians, or you give your number out to the whole world or the whole province at least. You have ears and eyes all over the place, and I get calls every issue, stuff you can't even think of. And I just try to help people out, but at least you have the pulse of the people. And uh, the pulse out there is everyone saying the same thing. Don't worry about the guys making 100 grand. Worry about the people that are, are low income workers. And I listen to the people. And I'm never shy, and I think I've proved it over the last four and a half years. If I have to change my mind, so be it. If I got to put water in my wine, I, I'm the first to do it. Uh, I just want a negotiation. I want the kids in class, bottom line. Uh, Premier Chanel from CP24. Hi, Chanel. Um, you talked a bit there about having your finger on the pulse. Yep. Were you surprised to see as much reaction as we saw to Bill 28? No, I, I wasn't surprised at all. I, I, I figured they would they would do that, and I understand it. That's their job, right? My job is to, to be a good steward of the finances of the province. As a Premier or any Premier across this uh, country, he doesn't have a responsibility just to look after 50,000 people. I have a responsibility to look after 15 million people to make sure that uh, we continue building, uh, building schools and hospitals and long-term care homes and you know, fixing the infrastructure, uh, building highways, roads, and bridges. Uh, that, that's my job. And making sure that we have the finances to do it. It's a balancing act. You gotta treat the lower income workers fair, but you also have to look at the other uh, you know, 15 million people. And then you gotta take into consideration on the housing about the, the I, I changed my figure now. It's 300,000 a year. Uh, because if the feds are bringing in 500,000 people a year, we're getting 60% of those people at minimum. That's 300,000 over a year. Where are we going to put a, a, over three years? Where are we putting close to a million people? You know, we, we need to build homes and we're going to build homes. And that's going to lower the cost uh, of uh, home ownership. And, and it's also going to employ people. Uh, my biggest issue right now, I need people. I need 380,000 people, and, and I'm happy that we're, we're getting as many people as we can around the world. But if you weren't surprised about the controversy or the reaction around this, why say you'll repeal the bill next Monday? Well, again, it's all part of negotiations. You know, when you go into negotiations, both sides, uh, you know, you got to give a little. And we're, we have an incredible record. You look at our government. When you sign 98% of all deals with unions without an issue, you know, I, I give the credit to the Minister of Labor. I give the credit to Minister Lecce. Uh, we have a great team. And I, I always want to be fair. That, that's what it comes down to. Fair to the lower income people. But I also have to be fair to the people who aren't even making close to what they're making. And they're paying the taxes. And they're paying our bills. They're paying my salary and every other person that works for the public services salary. And there's a lot more of them than there are of people that work for the public service like myself and other people. They're the ones paying the shot. Last question. Hi, Premier. Jeff Gray from The Globe. Hi, um, Jeff. How you doing? Good. Uh, I wanted to ask about uh, a phrase you've used a couple times about QP leaving the table. Mm -hmm. uh, our information is that both sides actually stayed at the table the entire time. It was the mediator, I think Minister Lecce made this point, the mediator called off the talks. Can you clarify what you mean by leave the table? The union well, did signal I'll, its intention to strike, but yeah. as far as we can tell, nobody left the table. Is that right? 
Well, I'll pass that over to Minister Lecce. He was close to that, but in, in, in saying that, we were willing to stay and continue negotiating, and uh, it broke down. But the good news is, folks, kids are back in class, and we're, we're putting, uh, uh, you know, we're putting our best foot forward. I'll pass it to Minister Lecce. Yeah, we uh, worked through the mediator on Thursday, uh, Jeff. We even delayed passage of the bill on Thursday to buy us more time to get to a voluntary settlement, which was the government's preference all along. The challenge then, uh, fundamentally, is that the union would not take strikes off the table, the strike that, that, that started on Friday. Um, and that's the fundamental challenge we had, and it's why we proceeded. Now, with that said, I mean, the Premier is making very clear, we're trying to move forward with a plan that allows the parties to come together so that we can keep these kids in school. We are in good faith offering more. We did last Sunday. We will do it again uh, today. And the requirement from both sides is to put kids first, to make sure that they're the center of our decisions. And that's why we are going to do whatever it takes to provide some stability in this province after a global pandemic and strikes only three years ago that affected so many children, their learning, their mental and physical and social emotional health. And that's why uh, today I think will we'll be a step forward so we can get a deal and keep the kids in school. And just a, a follow up, Premier, about Section 33. Yeah. Um, You've mentioned a couple of times that you don't like using it. That's you right. are the first premier in Ontario's history to use it. Mm -hmm. You have used it or almost used it three times. Mm -hmm. uh, it has caused a controversy each time. Uh, why, why are you different than other premiers? What, what, what change? Uh, why do you? What advice did you get? How did you? Why are you so different yeah, than sure. other premiers that you need to use Section 33? Is it the Attorney General? It gives you this advice, or where does this come from? This yeah, change? no, thank, th thanks so much for the question. You know, it's a legal tool in our constitution, and uh, endless uh, premiers over time have used it. Uh, our friends in, in Quebec, uh, I don't know, they use it twenty some odd times, but here and there, that's up to them. And uh, it's a tool that that uh, that is out there. So I said right from the get go, we'll use every tool at our disposal to uh, make sure the kids are in class. And I, I just hope the kids will stay in class and we can get a negotiation. So that, that's, that's the story behind that. There's, there's no other story. But this is a, a very serious topic, folks, and I, I, I'm going to have a lighter note because you got to have a lighter note sometimes. So about my tie. It's never happened to me before in my life, and I've met hundreds of thousands of people over the years, you know, you go by and you say, you know, I, there was a gentleman, a really good friend of ours, a grandfather, he's in his 80s, uh, what a sweetheart he is. I just went by and said, you know, I, I love that tie. Next thing you know, he's ripping it off his neck. You know how people say you take your shirt off the back? He took the tie off his neck and bingo, whipped it around. I said, sir, I can't, I can't take that tie. Oh, he got upset. He said, no, you're keeping that tie. I'm not wearing it. So I just... <laughs> Well, it's a fancy tie. I've never had more compliments about a tie in a morning in my entire life. So, Mr. Waxbird, thank you. You're, you're a champion, and I'll wear it with pride. So, uh, thank you so much, everyone. God bless you. And we're going to do what we can to get a deal for the lower income workers. And again, thank you, Q QP, for cooperating. I'm very grateful for that and uh, all the other uh, folks that were involved. So, thank you, and uh, we'll keep working hard. Thanks so much.